Hey family, it's Travis and Jackie. Hey guys. We are the pastors of Fort City Church. I believe this message you're about to watch is gonna be a game changer yes. for you. Get your notepads out, get your appetite stirred. <laughs> God has something to say to you in the right place at the right time. Listen, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell icon to get notifications for when we go live, all the good stuff. We yeah. wanna make sure that you also share this message with a friend. Everybody. If it touches your life, make sure you share it with everybody you know. No doubt, we love you, we'll see you soon. I'm glad to be back home, man. I'm telling you, I'm excited. I do have a word from God that I believe is going to really help bring some clarity to your life. And I love the church because we're layered. We got old school. We got new school. We got it all. Um, but it's the same God. Hey, man, we got people who got all kind of backgrounds. You come from Presbyterian, Presbyterian, um, Presbyterian, um, Baptist, Pentecostal. Pentabaptist, Pentecostal, uh, we got them all up in here, and so um, we like to have a good time. But, but there is the word from God, I believe, I really believe this word is going to help bring some clarity to your life, because the enemy is afraid of you recognizing what you have. You, you've paid a lot of attention to what's been stolen and what you've lacked and what you missed out on. But it's been a while since you turned around and evaluated what you have. I wish you'd just type it and scream it. Use what you got, man. Use what you got. Use what you got. They put some chains on Paul and Silas. And Paul's weapon was his, his, his pen. The dude could write, man. So they thought they had him limited. But he had another weapon that was stronger than his pen. The enemy messed up. Should have put some tape on the boy mouth. I might have lost a lot in 2020. The enemy may take some things, but he can't take my, as long as I got a mouth, that means I have a future. I ain't even trying to preach yet, but I just wish I had 20 people and a baby. That said, I might have lost some stuff, but I still got my praise. As long as I got a mind to remember and a mouth to declare, victory still belongs to my household. As for me and my house, I still have something left. I still have something left. 2 Kings chapter 4 talks about this widow. Her husband's a prophet. He's a good guy. But he was so busy working for God that he forgot to get life insurance. <laughs> so he dies. And she's left with a son. And she's like, I got to figure this thing out. So she runs to the prophet, Elisha, and says, hey, I need some help. We're, we're in bad shape. My husband, you know my husband. He ran with the prophets, but... We're in debt and we're in trouble. And the prophet does not pull out a checkbook. Doesn't pull out an American Express. He doesn't say, what's your cash app? He's not being insensitive. But he knows that the ability of God is supernatural. My wife said it earlier. But it's according to a power that works in you. So he looks at her and he says, man, I'm sorry to hear about what happened. He says, but what do you have left in your house? She says, I have nothing except. I love that word except. Because I gave God a doorway. What's your except? I have nothing except a small jar of olive oil. You may have heard the story. I preached a long series about it several months ago, jars, 
longest series I've ever done at this church, so you're pretty familiar with it. But she goes off an instruction and collects all the jars she can from the community. And she gets her small jar and starts pouring the oil. And as she pours, he pours. What if the abundance of God has been waiting on you? According to the power that works in you. So if the enemy can stop you from working, if he can stop you from trying, and you've asked the question, well, what if nothing happens? That's the wrong question. The real question is, what, what are you missing out on for not trying? Come on. Come on. As she pours, he pours, and the Bible says every jar, I could just imagine her home being filled with a bunch of jars, and they're all full of oil. It's a miracle. Gets enough money to get out of debt and to live off on her and her son. That's a lot of money. She's good. It's a miracle. It's also a tragedy. The tragedy is that eventually the oil stopped pouring. The oil didn't stop pouring because God ran out. The oil stopped pouring because there was nothing left to catch it. <laughs> Listen, I'm not satisfied mom with just coming to church to go to church. I'm not satisfied with just logging in on Sundays just to see what's going on in other people's house. I, I am a jar that keeps coming back. And I don't want to be in the presence of God and miss the oil. They used to say, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, please don't do it. Do not, I'm crying, Savior, Savior, hear my humble wild of the sour calling. Please don't pass me by. I am ready to receive what he has for me this season. And so if that means, David, I got to get my expectation up. If, if that means I got to wake up a little earlier to seek his face. If, if that means I got to close the refrigerator and turn my plate upside down. If that means I got to put some people on my block list. If that means I got to get off Facebook for a couple weeks. If that means I got to close my ear to what social media is saying and open my ear to heaven. Whatever it means, I don't want to miss the oil. Is there anybody in this room that says, God, I don't want to miss if you're pouring it out. My storage is empty and I am available. What do you have left? Oh, you got something you want to use, Shannon. What do you have knows what you don't have he's asking what do you have but God is small but it's something in it notice that every jar she collected was empty they may have been bigger but they didn't have the content you forgot what you carry do you think, Dexter, you went through that for nothing? Do you think that that last season was God just, just allowing a, some irony to happen in your life? No, 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 bro. No, 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 girl. He allowed you to go through that journey to fill you with something that you wouldn't have otherwise. And I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but if I could just have a few minutes I've been sent on assignment. I've been off the stage, y'all, but I haven't been out of his presence. I'm telling you, I got something for you today by the power of the Holy Spirit. He sent me here to release this word to you all over the world. It's very simple. You were made for this. You were made for, did you think you were an accident? No, 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 no. You're not a mistake. You were made for this. Every moment mattered. You were made for this very moment. And there's something that God had to get in you to get through you. Amen. 
I'm gonna pause right there so you can just let that marinate and saturate, ruminate. There's something he had to get in you to get through you. Type it and say it. I was made for this. Luke is an amazing book. There's a story in it that I want to read for you. You can take your seats. I've had you standing for a while. Man. Luke, I was made for this. I was made for this. Enemy's just trying to intimidate you. I was made for this. David, what are you doing on this battlefield? <laughs> Asking questions. You a lunch boy. No, 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 no. I was made for this. You have no idea what I've been doing in the background. Been warming up for a moment. Luke chapter 19 is a story that I love. And uh, Jesus shows up into the city. I'm going to read it so you know I'm not making it up. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was. But because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed the sycamore fig tree to see him. Since Jesus was coming that way, when Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. Can't just read the Bible. You got to read the Bible. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter. He's going to be a guest of a sinner. But the kid stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. If it cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house because this man too is the son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save the lost. Lord, breathe on your word. Do what only you can. We're here for you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Y'all ready to jump in? Yes. Man, that's not convincing. You know what, I want to I just sing a little bit of this. Can you go to one? I just, I can't get the song out of my head, so I just got to get it out. So I'm going to get it out. I'm supposed to be preaching, Lexi, but I don't know. I think it's like three people in this room that need to hear this, and the Lord just won't let it off of me. And I, I've been trying to avoid singing it for the past 10 minutes, I promise. But it's just like right here on my neck. So I'm just going to sing a little bit. The devil is a liar. God is his own. Never be defeated. Never be defeated. Uh, and it's like three people need to know that. Devil is a liar. God is his own. And I never be defeated. I don't even know who, like somebody just needed to hear that in your spirit. Cause he been like, the devil is a liar. God is his own. I'll never be defeated. The devil is a liar. God is his own. And I never will. I never will. And because God. It's the greatest power we shall never 
Sit down. Like three people that just needed to hear that. Like three people. Three people. Devil is a liar. All right. Was that you? Who was that for? Like a couple people needed to hear that. Yeah. He's a liar, man. You already won. And you were made for. It's a storm, man. You were made for it. It's a wilderness. You were made for it. Made for the struggle. And made for the victory. So, in order to really appreciate who I have become, we have to first acknowledge who I used to be. Several years ago, I was in the ninth grade. Not several, I mean over 20 years ago. Well over 20 years ago. And uh, they voted me for a homecoming court. And my mom, y'all know my mom. My mom said, if you're going to go <laughs> to homecoming, oh, you're going to step out. Because when the greens show up, the greens step out. So mama went, got me a downtown special. Two tucks for one. Penguin tail. Top hat. And as if that wasn't enough, mama said, wait, Travis, you, you need this cane I got from the Bahamas. Bam! Because when the greens show up, the greens step out. Now, I didn't look that, that, that bad in that photo. But you got to see me standing next to everybody else on homecoming. This is ninth grade before my mom put praying oil in my shoes and prayed for me to grow. This is not Photoshop, ladies and gentlemen. This is the real... Dill Holyfield. Because when the greens show up, the greens step out. Ninth grade. Ninth grade. You got to look back to appreciate where you're going. So I feel like he is pain. You know what it's like? Be a little deprived. Um, what's funny to me about this story is that bro man already got enough going on. He get an upgrade because Jesus says, I'm going to your house. And instead of them celebrating this advancement, everybody in attendance immediately becomes judgmental. And they say, out of all of the people, out of all of the prospects, out of all of the candidates, you choose to go home with a sinner? What's amazing about the story is that here we are now, 2,000 years later, struggling with one of the same plagues that I believe has marked the body of Christ. It's more infectious than COVID, ladies and gentlemen. A mask won't block this one. The disease is called spiritual amnesia. Ain't it funny how soon we for, believers be forgetting? How soon we forget? All it takes is for you to go back to your hometown, the one with the one red light and the one McDonald's, and there's somebody there from high school that called you by the nickname that you forgot about. How soon we 
And I know we forget when it takes two fast songs and a mid-tempo and a slow song to get us in the mood to lift our hands. Oh, I know we forget when we, when we served for two weeks and we burnt out in church, but we can work on a job we hate for 20 years. I know we forget. When someone in the church has a failure, we cannot wait to get on our, on our phones and text all our friends. Can you believe what such and such did? Because you forgot what you did. <laughs> it's not hard to find people who forget, but it's also not hard to find people who remember. Because those who remember don't need a whole lot to give God a whole lot. Those who remember, all you need is an opportunity and you're ready to turn up in the middle of Piggly Wiggly. You just thought about what God did and you go knocking over Captain Crunch and just having a fit. It don't take a lot to see the people who remember. Because those are those who have compassion empathize you're quick to love and not judge here are these believers and they are boy get. it reminds me of how you remember when Jesus when Jesus shows up and, and he has to he has to draw the line in the sand and start writing a message on on the floor and and then everybody even the elderly and the younger who are sitting there with stones about to, to stone this woman they all start thinking about their own journey it's like oh well I guess I'm not without sin but ain't it funny that the Bible says she was caught in adultery? How do you know she's a stripper unless you're at the strip club? Spiritual amnesia. You forgot where you used to be and who you used to be with and what you used to do. It's quiet on this side of this holy gets stirred. Spiritual am. Paul had a thing for these people. Like, like Paul, he had a thing for the Christians who be forgetting. <laughs> Multiple times we see him write love letters to them. <laughs> Corinthians chapter 6. What he take a letter. He start going at it. He just start listing them out. I love it. He get real explicit too. He said adulterers and idolaters and homosexuals and sodomites and extortioners and, and thieves. And he just goes on and on and on and on. Revilers. I mean, he gets really specific. All of you, all of you. And then he drops down in verse 11. He says, and such uh -oh. for some of you, of you forgot <laughs> <laughs> that the people I just named All should really be in your description. Uh -oh. Come on. But you were washed. This ain't for everybody. This next praise break. But you were sanctified. But you were just. If it had not been for the Lord on your side, you'd still be nasty. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Do I have 20 people and a four-year-old that'll lift your hands and say, thank you for not leaving me. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. I'll Forget how you brought me out. No, never. Then grandma used to pop up and say, How can I forget? So, so the people show up forgetting that they used to be like him too. Maybe it just appeared differently. And so Paul reminds the church, the Corinthians church, but he also reminds the church of Ephesus. In chapter two, he writes and he says, he says, he says, hey, 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 hey. He says, hey guys, let, let's talk about this too. You, you two were dead, okay? He said, and, and, and you two did a bunch of jacked up stuff. He said, but it was God who decided 
to rescue you. In other words, Paul says, it was God who took a chance on you. He says that God did a work on the inside of you that only he can get the credit for. It was by his spirit. He gets all up in the business in the second chapter. You got to read it when you get some time. But then he lands in verse 10. And verse 10 is where I got a little light-footed. That's why I just got a little happy. When I read this, I couldn't skip over it. And here's what Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Remember, this is a letter to the church. He says, for we are God's handiwork. Ooh. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do what? Good works. This is where it gets good. Which God prepared in advance for us to do. Wait a minute, wait, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait a minute. Listen, 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 listen. He says, it wasn't the goodness of our own that signed us up to do good works. He says, God, in spite of our past, decided to make something out of nothing and decided to use us. Now, this is what this means, handiwork. It means, ladies and gentlemen, that you are customized. <laughs> customized. You're tailor-made. You're one of a kind. You're exceptional. You're unique. You are customized. That's good, but that ain't it. He said, you got to read the scripture, your handiwork, creating Christ Jesus to do good works, which he prepared for you. Before time. This means not only are you customized, but that your journey has been customized. Steps of a good man are ordered, for we know that he caused all things to work together for the good. So my mistakes, customized. My failures, customized. Oh, I could show it to you in the Bible, don't play with me. The things I love about yesterday and the things I hate, all customized. I've been customized. My journey has been customized. Why? Because he's leading me to a customized assignment. <laughs> so God says, you are not an accident. All of it has been, say it with me, customized. The name Moses <laughs> means to draw out of water. You know the story. Mama put him in the river, in the basket. Moses' daughter finds him by accident. <laughs> Takes him from the water and gives him the name drawn out of water. Well, 80 years later, I said 80 years later, for those of you who thought you missed your moment, 80 years later, for those of you who thought God was done with you, 80 years later, Moses shows up to a body of water. Customized Moses comes with 80 years of a customized journey to a water that was there before he got there. But the water, because he was so customized, the laws of gravity, the laws of water, water don't split. Will it do for a customized assignment, and you wonder 
Why you show up to places and things happen for you, Sean, that didn't happen for nobody else? Because I'm customized, baby. So whatever's standing in front of me, got to come in alignment with the customized anointing on my life. Do you hear what I'm telling you in this room? I've been customized. So the water, the water split. Y'all, don't, don't let me scare nobody. I'm sorry. It's the people in this room. They pulling on it today. They just, somebody came with an appetite and they said, I'm not missing the oil if it's pouring out. He shows up and the water splits open. You know the story, Mr. LT. He guides two million people through something that's supposed to drown them. And they walk through when God shows up. He like the greens, baby. <laughs> Step out. So God said, not only am I going to bring you through it, but I'm going to blow some wind to make sure it's dry. Because you ain't taking your past into your future. You didn't hear what I just told you. Nobody even going to believe what God brought you through because there'll be no trace. Customize. Water splits. Y'all, I got so much, man. Y'all get me stuck in, like, intro stuff. I need somebody to give him 20 seconds. That's all you're going to get, so don't wait. Till it's over. You get 20 seconds to thank him that every step was orchestrated, that every move you made, that every season of your life was scripted by the God who is the author and the finisher of your faith. It was customized. So, the water splits open. Water splits open. And this is not an accident. I'm alive. Cause there's more. So he shows up in the water. So, he gets to the water. Jonathan, I got to get through this, y'all. All right. You were made for this. And you are not an accident. You're alive. Because there's more. I get to the water, the water split open. Two million people come behind them and walk through the water. So it's always amazing to me that he had to lead people through the thing that he had been drawn out of. You thought your story was an accident? You had to be drawn from that so that you can lead somebody. There's a book in you. There's a testimony that's going to stop somebody from committing suicide because you're going to tell them you're not the first one who's been rescued from that. I, too, was drawn out. Customized. <laughs> Customized. So, so, so if God, so if God allowed it, then he saw something.
something in it that would add, hear me, value. It didn't smell like oil. But it was part of the recipe that gave you the power to work. In other words, what this means is that you were made by God for an assignment that was made for you. You were made by God for an assignment that was made for you. You are God's handiwork. You are God's handiwork. Don't you ever let a lying devil tell you Hear me, that God wasn't working. It hurt, but he was working. It didn't feel good to me, but it was good for me. I didn't see him, but that didn't mean he wasn't there. He was working, and the only reason I'm still here is because God is still God. And if he's still God, then he's still good. And if he's still good, that it has to work together for my I was made for an assignment that was made for me it's made for this I'm not going to finish it this week but I just wish somebody would just worship and say thank you that I was made for this thank you that there's purpose on me thank you that there's value in me. I was made by God for an assignment that was made for me. I'm alive because there's more. Yo, it's, okay, so it's clear I'm not gonna be able to get through this today in this moment. So I'm going to just do a part two next week. But I believe God has been moving. And I believe, listen, I think someone just needed to be reminded in this moment that if God brings you to something, he is God enough to bring you through it. He's not a God who will set you up to fail. There's no failure in him. And if he's in you, that means there's no failure in you. You were born an overcomer, born a winner. And like Moses, brought you out of it that you can lead others through it. You may be watching today. The enemy has just been playing these mind games and, and convincing you that it's not worth it to keep going forward. I believe that this moment has been divinely interrupted, but it was scheduled by God. It may be an interruption to the enemy who's been trying to defeat you, but God wants you to be reminded that he's for you. And if God be for us, it's more than a world against us. I want to pray with you right where you are. You may be in despair. You may feel alone. You may even feel like it's not worth it to keep moving forward. But I can tell you, if you could just hold on, victory is yours. If you could just hold on, peace is yours. If you can just hold on. And this is what I believe. I believe that in this next season of your life, things are going to start making sense. You're going to know that you needed that to get you here. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I thank you for my friends watching all over the world. They need hope. They need you. And I pray that wherever they are, that you would just fill the room, that you would shift the atmosphere, that depression and anxiety must get out, and that love and, and life and peace and rest would just flood them now. Listen, if you're watching and something happened, I didn't even get to finish this, but I will. 
later, but something happened today that shook something in you. I tell you, it's not just a feeling, it's not just an emotion, it's a person. His name is Jesus and he came and lived perfectly, died a gruesome death. He went down so that we could stay up. He took the pain so that we can have access. Right now, wherever you are, I just want you to repeat after me this prayer. Lord Jesus, I believe you are who you say you are. You are a healer. You are a keeper. You are the Prince of Peace. God, I thank you. You came to earth. You took the cross. You took the grave. You went down, but you didn't stay down. You got up, so that means that I can rise again. I receive you in this moment as my Lord and my Savior. I'll never be the same. No, never in Jesus' name. Come on, give God a good praise. Hey, if you prayed that prayer for the first time or the first time in a long time, I believe by the scripture, your life will never be the same. Victory is yours in Jesus' name. Listen, you got a family in Columbia, South Carolina, and now we're all over the world that's praying for you, that's believing God for you. Remember, your past is going, your future is waiting. Prepare to move forward. Listen, don't miss next week. I'm going to do part two of this message made for this. I love you. I'll see you then. Hey, we pray that this week's message was truly transformative for your life. We thank you so much for joining us and we want you to stay connected. Even if you would like to give, all that information is down below. Absolutely. There's no gift too small mm -hmm. or too big. I'm going to tell you the greatest gift is if you receive mm -hmm. his gift of salvation for you. Maybe you're lost or maybe you're down and you just need it hope. This is the right place to provide that for you. Mm -hmm. And I know you might spell hope H-O-P-E, <laughs> but I spell hope J-E-S-U-S. Yes! He is our friend, he is our father, mm -hmm. and he is for you, he's mm -hmm. not against you. I would love to pray with you before you leave today. Mm -hmm. Would you please bow your head with me? Let's pray, Lord Jesus, I thank you for our family. Thank you. Thank you for this moment in time that we've had together that was on your schedule. Mm -hmm. This was an appointment, a divine appointment that the Father had with his children, and I pray that you would just bring calm to their heart, yes, that you'll bring peace where there's confusion, that mm -hmm. you'll bring joy where there's depression. You are our God. You are our friend. You are our father. All of this is for you. You mm -hmm. get the credit. For anyone who's lost, remind them yes, Lord. that you love them and you're for them. In Jesus' name, amen. We amen. love you. We'll see you next week.